Hi, I'm Dr. Rupa Wong. I'm a board certified pediatric ophthalmologist. And you might have stumbled on this video because you are interested in myopia management. What does that mean? Basically for children, if they are myopic or nearsighted, typically it gets worse and worse every year. We used to think that nearsightedness stabilized around 18 or 19, but now with all of the near work and college and screen time and the lack of time kids are spending outdoors, we're seeing nearsightedness increase all the way up until, gosh, even late 20s, early 30s. So usually parents would always ask me what can be done about this. Are there special exercises or foods that my child can eat to prevent the nearsightedness from worsening? And oftentimes, unfortunately, it's genetic and a combination of also lifestyle factors, how much time they're spending on near work, how little time they're spending outdoors. But now there are a couple options that we can do that help slow that progression of nearsightedness. One of them is an eye drop, low dose atropine. And the other thing that we offer here in our practice is my sight contact lenses. Parents often worry that this is an invasive treatment and it totally isn't, so I'm going to demonstrate all of the tests that we would do for a myopia consult on, do you want to introduce yourself? For the people who do not know me, um, my name is Aria and um, I am Dr. Rupa Wong's daughter and she will be testing this out on me. So if you want to learn more, keep watching. All right, let's get started. <laughs> So first, when you come in, your child will just get a regular vision exam, much like any other doctor. We'll check the vision, we will check and make sure everything looks healthy on the front surface of the eyes. What? Um, yes, you watch a movie while I'm examining your eyes. Okay, oh, you wanna tell them about that? That is kind of fun for the, I guess. Well, um, like if um, a doctor is looking at your eyes mm -hmm. and they want you to just look straight. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, um, they didn't want you just to look straight at a wall, so they put like a TV there. Mm -hmm. And also, um, we put that TV there not just because of the movies, uh -huh. because also if uh, you read the letters. Yep, I have that, the eye chart on the TV. Yep. And uh, it's just like more entertaining for people yes. so they don't like make that much noise and. <laughs> Or like, so much noise. they're not bored. So yes, I don't want you to be bored. And it's it's more interesting to read an eye chart that I can change the letters and sometimes I can make it just one letter at a time instead of a whole line like a chart. So let's get started with the one special test that we do for myopia management is something called an axial length measurement. And what that does is it measures how long your eyeball is. Does that sound scary? No because what happens when you are nearsighted and your eyeball is growing, the eyeball tends to grow longer and longer. And what we're trying to prevent is that axial elongation, which can cause later in life, if you're a high myope, so if you're anything over a minus five and a half, that can cause retinal detachments, cataracts, glaucoma, myopic maculopathy. So it's not just that we don't want our children's glasses to keep getting thicker and thicker. It's actually helping to prevent the degeneration of the retina and prevent some of these really vision-threatening, sight-threatening eye complications. So very simple little test that we do every six months to see if the treatment is working. Okay, let's go do it. So Arya, this is, this is all we're doing right now. It's just another picture. So it doesn't hurt. It's not something that's going to invade your eye or do anything like that, okay? Just a picture. And what it's doing is it's measuring how long your eyeball is. Okay, look straight. Try not to move around, because we can tell you're moving, sweetie pie. There you go, good job. Okay, blink. Oh, there you go. Hold it there. One open really big. So nothing about this hurts, it's just using light. Right. You gotta stay super still, look right at the red light. Hold it right there. Good. Hold it. And then a three, two, one open really big. So nothing was invasive about that. It's much like a regular eye exam. 
it is a little hard to stay still, if you couldn't tell, especially for the younger kids. Those that are older, 10 or 11, have no problem keeping their heads still and their eyes focused for that one reading, but it gives so much information about the trajectory of the nearsightedness and how that gets impacted with treatment. So it's great to know if I do the eye drop versus nothing at all, there's going to be a huge difference. If I don't treat my daughter with eye drops, she's going to end up being a minus 3.2 diopter lens, which means, you know, she's gonna end up being pretty nearsighted. Anything past about one meter, which is a couple, you know, a couple of feet is gonna be blurry for her. But if I treat her, she could end up being perfect, zero. Not, what are you doing? Like this, or are we doing like one of those little TikToks like that? <laughs> Which is nice. So, I mean, it's just nice tool to have in our armamentarium of being able to offer parents, especially parents like myself, where there's a genetic family history of nearsightedness, like with her dad, my husband. So, not too bad, right? I know it was a little bit difficult, but not the worst exam in the world. Thanks. So. If you come in for a myopia consult, that's exactly what will happen for you. And hopefully we can give you this kind of information so you know the benefits of treatment. Until next time, I am Dr. Rupa and thanks for watching. I'm Aria.